Do you have foot or inner shin pain? Keep watching for TBI's posterior exercises. All right, today's video, we're gonna be talking about the TBI's posterior muscle. And this muscle is involved in a lot of different conditions, including medial tibial stress syndrome, posterior shin splints, tendonitis of the tibia's posterior. It could cause pain in the foot, cause in the inner compartment of your shin. And the reason why it can cause pain in those areas is because that's actually where the muscle is found. So this muscle is found on the back of your calf and it kind of travels towards the inside of your shin and travels downwards behind this bone on your ankle and into your foot. The function of this muscle is plantar flexion and eversion. So the exercises that we'll be doing is gonna be taking a look at how to strengthen this movement. And we're gonna be going over some of the best exercises you can do to target this muscle. Now, when it comes to taking a look at all these different conditions that involve the TBS posterior, how long it'll take to get better really depends on which condition you're experiencing. If it's a tendonitis, this can take anywhere between three to six months for it to recover. Now, it should be noted that when the TBS posterior is facing some irritation or sensitivity that oftentimes the injury is due to one of two things fatigue volume management or often actually a combination of the two what this really means is that the muscle is getting overworked because you're probably training too hard too fast and not letting the body to catch up in its recovery or you try something that you, you're not used to doing especially when you've been deconditioned a common example is playing a sport only in seasons and then not doing anything in between to kind of maintain the condition of your body it also goes without saying that while you're recovering from this type of injury you're going to need to kind of decrease the volume of activities that aggravate the condition and this is just to give your body an opportunity to recover while you're doing your rehab exercises. In general, the exercises that we'll be doing today will be slow in nature in terms of tempo. And this is so that we can take advantage of the time under tension principle, where the slower you do things, the more you're going to cause positive adaptation in the tissues involved. Now you will need a few things for the exercises that we'll be going over today. You're going to need something like a yoga block or a foam roller. You're going to need an exercise disc and a Band. All right, so let's get started with our first exercise. All right, so the first exercise is a tibias posterior internal rotation exercise. This has been documented as one of the most effective ways of targeting this muscle. If you don't have a disc at home, something that you could do instead is that if you have carpeted flooring, you could use a paper plate, or if you have kind of hard flooring, then you can use a towel instead. So first I'm going to place that disc on the floor and then I'm going to have a band anchored to a stable object. The height of it, is the closer to your ankle height, the better. For me, the lowest I can get this is to knee height and that's plenty. From there, I'm going to place this on the disc and then I'm going to step on it with my forefoot, which is the balls of your toes. In this neutral position, the band's already going to be a little preloaded here. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're doing this exercise, the ball of your big toe here maintains contact with the band the whole entire time. So what that means is you don't want to necessarily use your big toe, you're using the base of your big toe. So one of the common habits is for people to lift this base up and use your big toe instead. If you end up doing that, you're not going to be targeting the correct muscle. You'll be targeting foot muscles, which is okay if you're facing some other types of injuries, but if you're trying to target the tibialis posterior specifically, you want to make sure that ball of the big toe is on the ground. So from here, you're going to start with your foot completely external rotated. You want to make sure your ankle is stacked directly below your knee. So from here, I'm going to have about 30 degrees of external rotation. Once I have my position set, position set up, I'm going to just internally rotate my foot, keeping my heel planted on the ground so my heel is not moving at all. And I'm going to go until about 15 degrees internal rotation. At this point, once again, because my, the ball of my big toes on the band, sandwiching that band into the floor, I'm actually actively pressing my feet down to the ground. I'm gonna feel the muscle activate in my foot arch, and then I, you might even feel it going up the shin as well. You might even feel your calf activate a little bit, which is fine because the muscle travels through the deep compartment of your calf. From there, you're gonna hold it for about five seconds or so, and then you're going to slowly release, and then you're gonna go again. So we're gonna go for a second repetition here hold and you find that the resistance isn't enough you could just slide a little bit further away from the anchor point if you find that's too hard to slide a little bit closer to the anchor point for me here is about right and then i'm going to let go nice and easy the great thing about this is that even though i'm in this rested position because there's band tension i'm still technically loading up that tibias posterior which means that I'm going to really take advantage of the time under tension principle, which is needed if you're doing a tendon-based approach. That's important if you're facing something like a tibialis posterior tendonitis. 
Okay, and then coming back out one more time. For repetitions, we're going to aim about for six to eight repetitions, two to three sets, it's really good. And doing this exercise every other day is going to be plenty, so long as the exercise intensity is rated at a six out of 10. So a six out of 10 intensity is going to be really important. If it's less than that, you need a heavier band or you need to go a little bit further away from the anchor point and then coming back down. In terms of rest, you're going to rest for anywhere between one to two minutes in between sets. That's just so that you can fully recover from your previous set so that you can do really good effective repetitions for the rest of your exercises. And we're going to rest from there. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next exercise and we're going to be using a loop band for that. So this exercise is easiest done with something like a loop band, but if you don't have a loop band, you just have a regular band, just make sure that you're tying it into a circle and then you can just use it that way instead. But since I have a loop band here, I'm going to be using that today. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to go into a figure four seated position. So I'm going to be placing one ankle on my knee. This is the targeted size. So I'm targeting my right side for the rest of this video. And then I'm going to make sure the band is anchored down with my foot down here. And then I'm going to loop it around the forefoot of, of my target foot, okay? So here, as you can notice, I'm kind of targeting that ball of the big toe. Common theme of this exercise uh, is to kind of take advantage of your levers, just like the last exercise that we did. All right, so from here, I'm going to just use my hands to stabilize my shin here. You don't need to if you don't have to. And then I'm going to make sure that my big toe is kind of extended just so that if it's down, I might lose grip on the band, okay? It might just snap off. So my big toe is just going to be helping me hook onto that a little bit. From there, I'm going to rotate my foot so that the bottom of my foot is rotated to face the ceiling. I'm also going to take my foot and point it downwards this way, okay? So I'm not going to be in flexion or dorsiflexion. I'm going to go into plantar flexion. And now I'm going to really feel that muscle engage all the way through my calf. From here, you're going to hold that end range for up to five seconds, and then you're going to slowly release it back down, and then you're going to come back up for your next repetition. Since we're doing these slow tempo repetitions, we're only going to be doing anywhere between six to eight repetitions, five second holds each, and really appreciating the muscles contracting here. And again, this is so that we could take advantage of the time under tension principles. When you're doing this exercise, it's really important that you're not moving the knee, you're not moving the shin. The only thing that's moving is your foot and ankle, okay? And even my, my lower part of my ankle where the bones are, they're just sitting in place. So the only thing that's really moving is my foot, okay? So I'm not kind of fidgeting around to get this thing up there. And then you're gonna come back up. We're gonna do a second repetition here. Similar to the last exercise, we're going to be doing about two to three sets, two or three times a week. Make sure you're having about one to two minutes of rest in between sets so that you can have enough rest to do effective repetitions. Some things to note, once again, we're aiming for about six out of 10 exercise intensity. So you can use a heavier band. Now for me, this is about a four out of 10. And this is the lightest band possible. This is the extra light band here. So you might actually find that that might be good enough, especially if you're facing an injury. Once again, I'm healthy. I have no injury here. But as you level up this muscle over that three to six month period, you might find that you get stronger and stronger. You can use a heavier and heavier band. Um, you're going to just really pay attention to how things feel while you're doing the exercise and how it feels after completing the exercises. So next we're going to go into our final and last exercise. And for that, we're going to use the yoga block and we're going to need a wall. All right, so we're going to be using a yoga block. Now mine is a foam yoga block. So I'm going to be just doing this in my bare feet. But if you have a cork yoga block, it might be a little bit more comfortable doing this in your running shoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this yoga block right in between my heels so I'm gonna place it on the floor and then I'm going to be placing it in between my feet here. I'm gonna face the wall. And during this exercise, what you're actually going to do is you're gonna take your heels and you're gonna be compressing that yoga block with max effort, all right? Of course, within a tolerable limit. So if I actually take a, if you actually take a back angle look at my feet, I'm gonna be actually pressing my heels in like that and holding that during the whole entire exercise. From here, you can use a wall just for the sake of balance. You don't need to use a wall, but if balance is gonna be a limiting factor, I'd rather you use a wall to take that out of the equation. Hands against the wall, squeeze, and then I'm just going to do a calf raise here. So these are called TBS posterior calf raises, and I'm going to squeeze, going up, nice and slow. So I'm going to be taking about five second tempo during this exercise. And if, you're, if you want a higher intensity, so like, if this exercise is a little easy, what you could do is you could put your body on an incline. So I'm gonna go a little bit further away from the wall. 
And then what this will do is it will kind of put me into a deeper starting position. So I'm in a little bit more ankle dorsiflexion, squeeze, and then I'm going to go up onto my toes. And now I personally feel this a little bit more and it's because I have pretty strong TBS posterior muscles. And once again, if you want, you could go even further until your ankle dorsiflexion is even maxed out. I have a good amount of ankle dorsiflexion, squeeze, and then once again, onto my toes, okay? And then you're going to take about five seconds to complete each phase of the mo movement. So it would take one, two, three, four, five, squeezing, and then one, two, three, four, five. For this exercise, we're going to be doing anywhere between 10 to 15 repetitions. And this is so that we can make sure that we're putting that muscle under enough tension for a long enough period of time to cause some positive adaptation in that tibialis posterior. Out of the three different exercises that we did today, this last one's gonna be the easiest. I like to save the easiest for last because you're gonna be the most fatigued at this point. If you want though, you could do a single set to warm the tissues up in the beginning and then finish two more sets at the end of your exercise session. Similar to the previous two exercises, we're gonna be aiming for anywhere between two to three sets and we're gonna be doing this two to three times per week. All right, that wraps up our exercise on the TBS posterior and exercises you can do to promote recovery for all these different types of conditions that you might be facing. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace.